So following Don is Megan Zarimsky of Vacher. Uncertainty, ambiguity, taking risks, facing the unknown. Just hearing these words is enough to strike fear in the hearts of many. We all have routines that we rely on, familiar routines, to provide us comfort. We sleep on the same side of the bed every night. When we wake up in the morning, we check the same apps on our phones or read the same websites. We drive the same routes to work. And once we're at work, we're also predictable. Check email, get coffee, go to meetings, repeat. Life becomes routine, and to some degree, that's okay. But there's a huge downside to routine, especially when working in the tech industry. Because in tech, what worked well five years ago or sometimes just one year ago could be completely obsolete today. And when we are stuck in the routines of doing things the same way, day in and day out, the results can be disastrous for companies. Only about one-third of companies survive 10 years. One-fifth make it to 20 years. And less than a half a percent of companies survive 100 years. I work for one of them, for Wacker, a German chemical company that was founded in 1914 by Dr. Alexander Wacker. This is Dr. Wacker. I know you guys are jealous of that beard. He'd fit right in in Ann Arbor today. When I say that we're 105, you may be picturing a company with standard products and outdated practices. But the truth is, to survive that long, you must exert a continuous effort to evolve while protecting and building on your strengths. Throughout Vocker's history, we, we've, we've continued to focus on new technologies and ideas. We began by making one product, acetone for the rubber industry. Today, we have four divisions, silicones, polymers, biosolutions, and polysilicon. And our silicones division alone produces more than 3,000 products. Our global sales last year were just under 5 billion euro. We have offices in 34 countries and 24 production sites around the world. So by all measures, Vacker is a successful company. But the moment we become comfortable, that is the beginning of the end. We're always seeking new ideas for inspiring innovation. And just a few months ago, we took a chance on a new program called the Silicon Valley Challenge. The idea was to send 19 employees to Silicon Valley for four weeks. There, they would learn agile methods and how to focus on the customer, immerse themselves in the startup culture, and develop new business models for Vocker. The 19 would be divided into three teams for a bit of healthy competition. And at the end of the month, they would travel to Munich and pitch their ideas to our executive board. The, uh, the goal was to <clears throat> find a new business model that could generate $10 million of profit within five years. So it was a bit of a real world meets Shark Tank meets The Apprentice situation, but without cameras following people around, and hopefully nobody would be fired. I'll let you insert your own Trump joke here. I'm sure you have one. I first learned about the Silicon Valley Challenge through an internal announcement that linked to a website and video asking for applicants. The program was open to any one of our 14,500 employees worldwide from any role, any location. But this was no normal application. There were no questions to answer, no forms to fill out, no typical resume submission. Instead, the organizers issued us a challenge. Inspire us. Show us why we should choose you. Remember what I said about ambiguity? How do you know <laughs> if you want to apply for a program? How do you know, know how to apply for a program when you aren't really sure what it's about? But the application itself was designed specifically to attract individuals with a certain level of curiosity who were willing to participate in something new and different, even if it wasn't completely defined. So I was definitely intrigued by the idea. You know, spending a month in Silicon Valley, working with an international team, learning new concepts, and building a business that could drive future growth for my company. I wanted to be a part of that. But applying for the Silicon Valley challenge was scary, I have to admit. And it wasn't just the competition. I'd worked for Vocker for 13 years, and there were parts of my private life that I preferred to keep private. I just didn't think that my colleagues would 
understand or appreciate my involvement with the Burning Man community or my time spent on stage performing improv comedy, for example. But somehow I felt that this was the right opportunity to reveal the hobbies that both nurtured and challenged me outside of work. I spent 12 hours producing a six-minute video. <laughs> In it, I talked more about my extracurricular activities than I did the lines on my resume. When it was finished, I uploaded it to YouTube, emailed the link to the application address, and waited. More than a month later, I got the exciting news that I had been selected. Thankfully, I had the full support of my manager and team at work, as well as my family. I knew I'd be away from them for more than a month. I have a daughter who just turned three, and when people asked me how I could possibly manage to be away from her for five weeks, I just asked them how the fathers who had been accepted into the program had answered, because surely they had asked them the same question, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some, someday I'll be proud to share this experience with my daughter, and I want her to grow up feeling that she should not only seize opportunities when they present themselves, but actively seek them out and not be hindered by anyone else's judgment. Once we arrived in Silicon Valley, the adventure began. I was introduced to my team, which included members from Germany, Sweden, China, and Brazil, and we all got along great, which was no surprise, because the program had intentionally attracted individuals who were open to new experiences, mindsets, and cultures. And it was our cultural and functional diversity that drove us to challenge each other more and develop more creative ideas. In seminars and workshops, we learned to focus on the customer. Observe and listen. What are their pain points? What problems can you work to solve for them? Let that answer drive your innovation. You can make assumptions, but test them and do it quickly because you're probably wrong. Adjust and try again. We were plunged into uncertainty through rapid prototyping and prototyping, talking to customers and realizing we were wrong. We went through many iterations before developing a sound solution for our customer. In the end, the three teams pitched four unique ideas to our board, and the board supported three of them. Unfortunately, our intellectual property department will not allow me to disclose the details of those three <laughs> projects to you here today. But trust me when I tell you that none of them represent business as usual for Vocker. And that was the whole point. Vocker took a chance on the Silicon Valley Challenge. They took a chance on the 19 of us from around the globe, and now we are empowered to carry those projects forward. At the risk of sounding like a Republican, corporations are people. What I mean is that the success of an organization is achieved by the hard work of its employees. And since we know that corporations must continue to evolve in order to survive, that means that each of us as employees must be willing to take risks and face the unknown. If you're like me, you may find that life's most exciting and rewarding moments come when you jump outside of your comfort zone. That is where the magic happens. Thank you.